Hello and welcome to special rules. Special rules to test the uh, validity of syllogisms for figures because uh, if you will see there are uh, different figures in a syllogism like we know that there are uh, uh, one, two, three, four figures, right? So every figure is having some special rule, some special rule which is uh, helpful for testing uh, syllogisms. And if we know the special rule, then we also know that whether this syllogism is going to be valid in this figure or not. So what are those special rules and how to prove those special rules we will be discussing today. It will be a short video because we will be taking around um, two examples to understand that what are those special rules, right? So now if you see the special rules for figure one, right? So the special rules for figure one says that the major premise must be universal. Now, this is the first rule that the major premise must be universal. And the second rule says that the minor premise must be affirmative. So how to prove these, right? So I'm only taking the first rule. That is the major premise must be universal. Once you will see that how we prove, so you will understand or you will have the idea that how you need to go on to prove the other things, right? So that is the idea. So uh, in order to prove uh, the first rule, uh, for the first figure, I have drawn the first figure. You can see that this is the first figure. This is going to be the position of middle term. Okay. Now, let the major premise be particular if we consider this because we have to prove that the major premise must be universal. So the age of old technique is let us assume the negation. particular right this is going to be the major premise right so if it is a particular premise so whether it will be an i proposition or an o proposition this term will not be distributed right okay so if this is not going to be distributed this is something which i have written as well but try to understand from the figure as well that if the major premise is particular then this term is not going to be distributed if the middle term is not distributed in the first uh, premise then it has to be distributed in the second premise right that is the idea because or else we will be having undistributed middle now if we have to distribute middle term over here right so what we have to take, we have to take a negative proposition, right? Because the negative propositions will distribute their predicate terms, right? And the predicate term over here is the middle term. Okay, so we will be taking this as a negative uh, premise. Now you can see that this is going to be a particular premise and this is going to be a negative premise. Then only we can follow it. Now, if we have a particular affirmative major term and a negative minor term, then the conclusion must be a particular because I'm, I'm reading it now over here because we have already discussed what is going to be above, right? So we have a particular affirmative major term and a negative minor term. Then the conclusion must be a particular negative proposition because this is something which has to hold because one is a major, uh, one is an affirmative uh, major term and the other one is a negative minor term. So it has to be, uh, sorry, the first one is a particular affirmative major term and the second one is a negative minor term so from this so one is particular uh, and uh, one is negative so the conclusion has to be a particular negative proposition we know now a particular negative conclusion distributes its predicate term now suppose if we write s and p over here and i will give some space to it by writing like this Okay, so if you see this, now if this is a uh, particular and this is a negative, so in any of the ways, once uh, one of the uh, pr proposition is negative, so it has to be negative. So this term will be distributed, right? This term, right? Okay, now if this term will be distributed for the conclusion, so if this term is distributed in the conclusion, then it has to be distributed over here as well, if you can see that, right? So if this term is a particular negative and this term is distributed, so it has to be distributed over here. But now you see that the major premise was taken as a particular premise. Now, what will be a particular premise? It will be either an I or an O proposition. Now, if you take an I proposition, then none of the terms will be distributed, neither this nor this. If you take an O proposition, then you will have the problem of exclusive premises. So if you see this, I have also argued over here that a particular negative conclusion distributes its predicate term, which is the major term. The major term in the major premise is undistributed because it is a particular affirmative proposition. Thus, if we assume that the major premise is particular, we come at the fallacy of illicit major. So 
either there will be licit major or there will be the fallacy of exclusive premises so this is the line of argument because you need to understand that once you will be taking these rules because these uh, these are two special rules for figure one right the major premise must be universal and the second one is the minor premise must be uh, affirmative so once you take the opposite of that you will always fall into the trap of okay this error will come or that error will come so ultimately you will understand that we cannot take the opposite other than we have to assume this only right so this is the age old technique of uh, arguing and it is a very simple uh, argumentation uh, since you people are watching it in a video form so i am not uh, supplying these uh, ready made solutions to you but you can always pause the video or take uh, say the screenshot of these things so that if you want to uh, use it as a reference so you can always use the reference now let us come quickly to special rules for figure 2 the special rules for figure 2 is that the major premise must be universal this is the uh, first special rule for uh, figure 2 and the second one is that one of the premise must be negative so this is the second special rule. so in um, uh, figure 2 they say that the uh, one of the premise has to be negative if both the uh, premises are affirmative then no conclusion follows so this is the beauty or this is the special characteristic of uh, figure 2 now, if you come to, I'm not providing you the proofs. I, I have not provided you the proof of the second one as well here, because I want you to write the proofs for yourself, because once you will be writing proofs for yourself, so you will also understand that what is the line of reasoning or how these uh, figures give you certain indications that what are uh, the possible premises and how the conclusion will follow. Anyways, now let us come to figure two. So we have already discussed figure two, right? That like the major premise must be universal and one of the premise must be negative. So this is uh, these are basically the rules for figure two. Now, if you come to the special rules for figure three, so these uh, these are two rules. The minor premise must be affirmative and the conclusion must be particular. So it talks something about the conclusion. It's not only talking about the premises, but it is also talking something about the conclusion. You can always take the opposite of this and see that it will be illicit major, illicit minor, or exclusive fallacy, uh, exclusive premises fallacy, or something or the other. Something or the other will definitely come. Okay. Okay. Now let us come quickly to uh, the special rules for figure four. Now, in the special rules for figure four, if you see, uh, these are the special rules. If the major premise is affirmative, then the minor premise must be universal. The second one is if the minor premise is affirmative, then the conclusion must be universal. And third one is if either of the premises is negative, then the major premise must be universal. Now, these are three rules. You can check it for yourself. That's not going to be a problem. Now, there is something special about, uh, say, figure four. And this is going to be very important. What are those special things? The first special thing, and in fact, it is true for all the three statements that these are basically uh, if then statements, right? That means they are implications. Now, what is the implication of this implication? Now, there's something which is interesting and there's something which you should understand. When an implication is false, an implication is false when its antecedent is true. However, its consequent is false, right? So if you have to make this statement false, what you need to do? You have to put this part, which is the antecedent part, as true. And this part, which is the consequent part, as false. So now if you can see, this is this is for your reference, this is the fourth figure. If you see the first line, let the major premise be affirmative and, and the minor premise be particular. Now, if you see this line, major premise is affirmative. I have also taken major premise is affirmative. Minor premise must be universal. I am taking minor premise is particular because then I have to take the negation of the second part, right? Now, if you then write the proof and you can see the proof. And as I told you that you can always pause the video or you can take a screenshot and uh, understand this. So you will see that this is going to follow. So. The important thing about these thing, uh, these rules are like every figure is having some special rule or the other. The first three figures are having two special rules. The fourth figure is having three special rules. Now, in the third figure, they also talk about the conclusion. So this is the important thing about um, and the third figure. And in the fourth figure, it is basically talking in terms of uh, 
say the uh, um, premises as well as the conclusion and so on but all of them are if then statements and there is a way of solving the if then statement or say uh, proving an if then statement where you take the antecedent as true and the consequent as false the rest of the things you can see it for yourself so this is something which i wanted to bring to your attention so that you do not falter in an examination and you know how to write a proof you can write proofs for all of them right there will be total uh, 11 proofs two uh, two of them i have already discussed uh, in this video and the rest uh, nine you can always write it on your own right because uh, six nine nine uh, nine will be them and uh, nine will be there so uh, seven you can uh, write it on your own apart from that richard kilwardley who is also um, considered as a medieval logician though uh, he may not be very accurately called as uh, uh, a medieval logician but still in the later part of the medieval era he was uh, very prevalent uh, he gave two very basic rules for all the figures and this is very interesting these are the two rules first in a valid syllogism at least one premise must be universal now this is very interesting right because one premise has to be universal because we know that no conclusion follows from particular premises something which is coming out from here only and the second one is that in a valid syllogism at least one premise must be affirmative so this is also something which we know and uh, these are basically the rules which became uh, the rules in the uh, sixth uh, uh, in in our six rules as well right so if you see in our six rules you will find the contribution of buridan a uh, lot for um, the uh, concept of distribution so once you will see the rules regarding distributions those are basically governed by the rules which were found in buridan study and if you see the uh, say like no conclusion follows from two negative premises or one of them is affirmative then uh, the other uh, one of them is affirmative and one of them is negative so the conclusion has to be negative or um, uh, <clears throat> uh, like uh, if uh, uh, one is universal and one is particular then the conclusion is particular so they basically follow from these richard kilbertley's rules so um, read study uh, try to make proofs of this so once we will be meeting in the class we will be discussing more about it thank you